Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a look at the latest version of the DaVinci Resolve Professional Video Editor. This is available in both free and paid versions, although here we're looking at the free version, and specifically in version 14 they've added in a great audio editor and they've also made some significant speed enhancements. So, let's get the latest version of DaVinci Resolve. And to run this, you're going to need a 64-bit operating system, you're going to need at least 8GB of RAM, and you're going to need a CUDA Core graphics card with at least 1GB of RAM. And we'll go to the uh, Blackmagic Design website, and we'll go to DaVinci Resolve and Fusion Software, and click on DaVinci Resolve. Now, I'm not going to take you through the whole process of downloading and installing a piece of software, but there are two queries that keep coming up on my DaVinci Resolve videos, so I want to address those right at the start here. So I'll click on Download, and the first thing you'll notice is there are multiple versions of DaVinci Resolve. For a start, at the moment, there's the version that's not in beta, which is what, 12.5.6, which is great software, but there's also the public beta of 14, which is a stable beta. It's been out for a while. It's been through several iterations. That's what we're going to be looking at here. But the more critical thing is there are two versions here on the right and the left. On the left, we have DaVinci Resolve. This is free software. People keep telling me in the comments on YouTube they've downloaded DaVinci Resolve. It's not free, Chris, they say. It's a trial. That is because they've downloaded the wrong version of the software. They haven't downloaded DaVinci Resolve. They've downloaded DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the paid version of the software, currently costs $299. So if you download from over here on the right, you will not get free software, you'll get a trial. If you download on the left, you will get DaVinci Resolve, and it is free. And free means free, there's no time limit, there's no watermark, nothing like that. As you can see, you can get the software for Mac, Windows, or Linux. Uh, I'll click on Windows here for me, and you'll get to this screen where you have to fill in your details, and then you actually press the button and get the software. Don't worry, you don't get spam when you've done this. I've been using DaVinci Resolve for many years now, and I've never had any emails from the Blackmagic designer I wouldn't have wanted to get. You just get the occasional thing about new software features and that, that sort of thing. But the problem people have with this screen is they fill it in, and then they fill all their details in, and then go, how do I get the software? And the answer is there's a button down here. But they don't always find that and therefore they don't know what to do and they get very mad and they, they moan at me. So if you do not get the button, and here I've got a scroll bar, but if you don't, press F11, which will make your screen a bit bigger, so you might get the button that way. And if not, press Control and minus on the keyboard and the windows anyway, and you'll get the screen coming up with no scroll bars and you'll find the button. So I'm not going to fill my details in here to get the latest version of DaVinci Resolve. I'll come back to you when it's installed. So, here we are in DaVinci Resolve 14. It was, as previously with DaVinci Resolve, a very straightforward installation, although after the installation I did have to update my graphics drivers to get the program to run. This is quite common with DaVinci Resolve. It's very picky about having the latest drivers for your graphics card. Anyway, once it was running, the first thing you notice if you've seen DaVinci Resolve before is that rather than having four tabs down the bottom of the screen, we have five tabs because what they've done is they've added in the Fairlight Audio Editor. So we have this fantastic audio editing screen on top of the screens we had previously. So what I thought I'd do is just talk you through the screens we've got here. I'm not going to go through everything in great detail because I've made other DaVinci Resolve videos, but just to basically talk through the workflow in this package. So first of all, we have what's called the Media Pool, the Media Tab. And here you bring in your files from your drives on your machine, and you can grab a file and sort of drag it down into your media pool, and it then becomes available to use in your projects. And if we pick it up there, you can inspect, obviously, what's going on with that particular clip. We then have the Edit tab, which is where you do most of your work as an editor anyway. And here we've got, if we just turn off the inspector a second, we've got the standard monitors. You'd expect the timeline monitor and the clip monitor over here. And uh, it's all very nice and responsive. And Really, the, the thing you notice more than anything else with DaVinci Resolve 14 is that it's just a more responsive package. They've rewritten it from the ground up to be a lot faster, and that certainly shows. Here, I'm actually running this on my i7. It's not the machine I started running on at the start of this video, because that's a more difficult one to record, and I'd forgotten that when I started making this video and I was 
um, launching Resolve. So I've shifted machines across, and this is actually running Windows 7 rather than Windows 10, and it's running without an internal graphics card. So in theory, this shouldn't even work with Resolve, but it does. And I think that's one of the things you can see as a big difference between Resolve 14 and previous versions. It runs better on lower spec hardware. And that's a great thing if you happen to want to run a video editor on lower spec hardware. So basically here, you've got your media pool where you can grab a clip and drag it down onto the timeline. We could grab, uh, I don't know, that thing and pull it down, say, under there if we wanted to. And uh, we've also got our effects library so we can uh, get to all the different effects if you want them. And you can turn these things on and off and uh, rearrange things on the screen to be exactly as you, as you would wish. So you can sort of decide on your, your actual particular workspace. And of course, you can save your workspace as you can in any, any decent video editing package. People often talk to me about picture in picture. It seems to be the one thing people always want to know how to do in a video editor. So I will just show you that here. Here we've got a clip of some blossom and, and underneath the blossom is a, a clip of the, uh, I think that's a nanobot. What if we wanted that as a picture in picture from about there? Well, we could go into there, go into the inspector and we could just drop in a, uh, some keys on the position and, and, and the zoom of that. And then we could maybe um, take it along a little bit and we'd maybe zoom it in um, quite a bit, take it down there. Maybe quite not that much, Chris. And then uh, we can maybe uh, pull it across like that and pull it across like uh, upwards. And then we'd have something which would become a nice picture in picture effect as it, uh, if I can grab it, zoomed across. So, anyway, that's how you would do picture in picture on this sort of package. Now, when you've actually put your uh, thing together, you've got your color correction screen, the color correction tab. DaVinci Resolve was actually written as a color corrector. That's how it went through most of its life, most of its iterations. Video editing is a relatively recent addition to DaVinci Resolve. And you've got here a node-based system, so you can add different nodes in to control all kinds of things on your clips in terms of their color, but also things like composite. You may remember I've showed you how to do green screen compositing, green screen work with this package in a previous video. And you can also play with the colors to your heart's content. Here I'm just playing with a curve on that particular little clip there. You can see it's Obviously, I'm making big, big changes so you can see the effect there, but you move things around. I often put little gamma curves onto, onto clips like that. But you've also got all of your standard things to adjust with the standard sort of mixes if you want, or you can uh, use your standard color wheels to adjust gammas and that type of thing. You can have a lot of control for missing every single shot in DaVinci Resolve. The final tab we've got here is what used to be our fourth tab. It's now our fifth. This is the delivery tab. This tab is the one where you can obviously send your files out to be your, your final film. And the formats here are greater than we were in Resolve initially, but to be honest, DaVinci Resolve is still a professionally focused package. So you'll see video formats are by and large focused around things like a MXF, which you can check out in things like a DNX HR. Uh, but you can do, if you wish, QuickTime and check that out in um, other formats. We've got uh, things like MPEG-4 there, and you can also quick um, Chuck out in things like photo JPEG formats and that type of thing if you wanted to. And you can now also uh, export audio only in this package. And there also are, compared to earlier versions of Resolve, presets for things like YouTube and Vimeo. So it is a bit more uh, consumer friendly than it used to be. Finally here, I'll show you we have got this Fairlight audio editor. I've missed that tab out because it's a new one. This is, this is great. It gives you a lot more control over audio. It makes you feel like you're in a proper studio just looking at it. And I love the way the audio plays nicely as you scratch through it. I should have picked clips with better audio than just a little bit of sound effect, but at least it, it shows you the principle. So I've not really experimented this very heavily. I haven't had reason to. I don't tend to do very, very complicated audio edit. But if you want to do a complicated audio edit, it's certainly possible to do it in DaVinci Resolve 14. So there we are. That's just a quick look through the uh, update of my favorite uh, free video editor, DaVinci Resolve. As we've seen in this video, DaVinci Resolve continues to get better and better. It really is a great free video editor. But I hear some of you cry, what about all the other free video editors? Well, I've looked at Caden Live here in the past. I've looked fairly recently at Avid Media Composer first, but I know there's also things like Shotcut and OpenShot and Lightworks and HitFilm. So what I'm going to do in a future video, and not too long from now, is I'm going to do a head-to-head, -head, looking at all of the available free video editors in one video, looking at what they are, and looking at where they're most applicable. Because some of these editors, like say DaVinci Resolve, are really good for professional editing. Other ones, like say HitFilm and ShotCut and OpenShot, are better for sort of more consumer-based projects. Anyway, 
That's now it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen here. If so, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.